we're all going to be fine. So uh, welcome Simon West to uh, the Screen One interview. Um, the, for those of you watching, he's the director of some of our personal favourite action movies in Con Air and Expendables 2, among others. But currently you have your latest movie out, Skyfire, which has just come out on Blu-ray Digital and DVD over here. So um, let's get straight into it. I mean, Skyfire, I enjoyed it immensely. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely brilliant disaster action movie. Um, and it's been pretty much received amazingly over here in the UK, uh, roundly. So what do you think it is about disaster movies that people love so much? Um, I don't know, uh, you know, where the line between a disaster movie and a straight action adventure mm. lies, really. It's sort of, it's a throwback to the 70s, that, that uh, mm. disaster title. And I guess it's because it's like one big bad thing happens yeah. and that makes it a disaster. Um, and I just think, uh, you know, whether it's an action film or disaster thing, uh, movie, it's really about your heroes being in jeopardy. So, mm. you know, if you care about them and you're interested in them, um, whether they're being, you know, attacked by a, you know, a, a gang of bandits or a, in this case, a angry volcano, um, you know, you want them to survive. And uh, so they, you know, I don't think people necessarily think, oh, it's a disaster movie versus an action film. They just think this is going to be a, you know, a roller coaster ride. Great. So um, Skyfire is, is a Chinese based movie, isn't it? So um, how did you come to getting involved with it? And obviously, how difficult was it making the film with obviously the language and culture differences in how they come to make films over there? Well, the difference with this film is that, it, you know, a lot of um, films in Hollywood, you know, recently in the last 10 years have tried to uh, appeal to a Chinese market as well, because it's now so huge mm. um, that it's, you know, it's half the world practically. So I mean, what often happens, though, is they'll, they'll throw in a token Chinese character, but a bit of a Chinese, you know, plot line in it, and then go off and make, you know, a pretty normal Hollywood movie. And the Chinese don't actually like that. You know, they're from, uh, from what I've found, they just, they, they re realise what's being done, and they're sort of having the wool pulled over their eyes, and it's just a, a bit of tokenism. So the difference with this is it, it, it is made by, you know, Western... Uh, mm. Well, an international crew, actually. It was 17 yeah. different nationalities oh, wow. on the crew. And we shot in Malaysia. And um, so, you know, the common language on set was English because that was, we had to find mm. one language that most people could speak. And, you know, there were, there were um, predominantly a Chinese cast, but mm. the cast was bilingual. So it wasn't like okay. I had to, um, you know, go through 10 interpreters just to direct the actors. Um, but what was different is that instead of just trying to make a movie that you could dub or, or um, uh, subtitle for different markets, especially for the Chinese market, I actually shot it in the two different languages. So I shot most of the scenes twice, once mm -hmm. uh, in Chinese and then once in English. And so there's two different edits. So, so it was sort of a, a much more detailed version of, two, of, uh, of a co-production. And, and normally, you know, there's a, as I said, there's sort of a token, um, effort made to whatever the the other you know market is but this one was actually you know almost shot two films at once with the same cast and you can only do that if they're bilingual obviously mm. and um but also also you know had jason isaacs sort of the center of it to sort of anchor that who obviously is you know a great english actor and he was sort of the the, the centerpiece of of it so everything sort of revolved around um his storyline and um and so it became a, a truly international film because it was made internationally and it was designed to be shown, you know, both in China and in the West um, and, and be you know, perfectly acceptable to both. And even changing other things apart from just the language, we also changed some of the jokes um, because humor and things like that doesn't play in the same way in, in both cultures. So for instance, you know, in China, they don't have deadpan humor as much as we do. So some of the sort of, dry ironic um jokes had to be changed into much more um you know uh, chinese culture friendly so um it was like almost like shooting two movies at once but obviously all the action and excitement is all you know the same in both 
yeah, actions one language, I suppose. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so you just mentioned Jason Isaacs, who who was the you know uh, was in South African, wasn't he? he wasn't too in English. Um, yes. So well, he was he, he was to... he was channeling uh, Elon Musk for that. Um, oh because... right. Oh, okay. Yeah, Wanted because Josh we, we, Ackland from Lethal Weapon Two. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> no, because we would. It was really. Um, he plays, you know, a character who's not the bad guy. I mean, the, the volcano is really the bad guy, um, mm. who's trying to kill everybody. Yeah. Um, and he he was just a dreamer who built this resort on what he thought was an inactive volcano, but turned out to be an active one. And so he was a dreamer. And so when I was talking to Jason about who this person is, he said, "Well, he sounds a bit like Elon Musk to me." You know, he, he wants to fly to Mars. He wants to yeah. build, you know, uh, homes on the moon and things like that. So uh, he decided to go the whole hog and do the accent as well. <laughs> it was great. It's great. So um, once you just you just touched on it there, um, it's another large ensemble cast movie that you've done. Um, and as I previously mentioned, Con Air and Expendables 2, which are also large ensemble cast movies, um, even though they're action movies, obviously. So what draws you to having big you know, cast, because that's, you know, an awful lot of actors to deal with and wrangle it for a better use of the term um, on these films. So what draws you to these kind of big cast films? Well, I mean, it wasn't necessarily a conscious decision. It was um, with mm. Con Air. It was just, I was lucky enough to be given, you know, the uh, freedom to pick whoever I like to be in it. And I could have picked mm. a lot of unknown actors and uh, or a lot of action guys. But what mm. I chose was all my favourite sort of independent movie actors who hadn't really done any action, you know, like John Malkovich mm. or John Cusack or mm. Bing Rames and Cole Meany. They weren't really action actors. They were, you know, indie. indie. And even Nick Cage was only just becoming yeah. an action star there. Before that, he was in some, you know, incredibly cool, you know, small indie uh, films. And so it became an ensemble cast because it just, I was allowed to go and collect all my favorite actors. And, and then it sort of became a thing, you know, in Expendables 2, was um, a different thing. That was that kind of an existing franchise yeah. where the the you know the, the shtick of the franchise was we get all those old favorite action stars you grew up with and put them in one place and see what the hell happens, you know. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I took it on really because I thought um, that's a lot of fun to get you know all those guys in one place and and also the I felt like I could take it a stage further because you know Arnie. Um, Sly and um, Bruce Willis were never really in action together. They had, mm -hmm. you know, before that they had some dialogue scenes. There. But I was thinking, well, you know, what, what the fans really want is to see these three shoulder to shoulder letting Absolutely. off huge weapons and taking care of business, you know, in the same scene and even in the same frame because um, I didn't even cut between them in singles. I made sure they were always, you know, in the wide shot, you know, in the wide frame, you know, we were shooting um, widescreen so you can fit three massive action stars in a widescreen like that you know with all the muscles and the guns and everything and so it was very kind of spaghetti western yeah. in that in that uh, in that style that I was going for. So with Skyfire because that's the, the, the Chinese cast of amazingly popular in there are obviously they're not as well known over here but you know was yeah it, so I was, similar sort that of was sort of uh, again it was a uh, you know, these are people who are known for certain things in China, um, you know, either very you know, serious dramas or um, cool young, you know, uh, martial arts films or whatever it is. And bringing them together was not, was exciting for the Chinese audience because they were they already know them are very popular. Um, but it was a, a good chance to present them to the Western audience who didn't necessarily know them. I mean, one of the actors, um, um, Mr. Wang was in um, uh, Iron Man 3, so people might know him from that. Yeah. But other than that, it was, say, you know, it was saying, look, there's some very cool actors out there that you may not have seen, and uh, we'll see them in a fresh uh, environment. And they were keen to do that as well. They wanted to, you know, see what the Western audience thought of them. Yeah, so it kind of, again, leads into my next question. So um, would you bring any of them over to, like, big budget Hollywood? Do you think they would work over you? I mean, I know I know, Hannah was in Skyscraper with The Rock last year. Yes. With, yeah. Sorry, 2018. Yeah. So... Oh, oh, definitely. Oh, no, I mean, all the way through, I'm, I'm, I'm always sneakily looking, you know, what I'm going to do on the next film. On the, and so I'm sort of, sort of, this film is sort of auditioning them for the next one, even though, you know, it's, it's, it's they're actually working on a film. So, yeah, oh, they're, definitely. I, I've already got... Um, things in mind projects in mind for uh, a lot of these actors that I work with uh, John because 
you know, they are they are fresh and unseen, but they have like mm. remarkable talent. So uh, yeah. I definitely would like to work with them again. Mm. So it, if, if the film comes across as a lot of fun. So I presume that the actual experience of Skyfire was a lot of fun. So what was your, you know, the most fun part of actually creating Skyfire and all the bedlam? Well, the fun is sort of in the in the thinking up the ideas, actually, when you're actually out there in the steaming jungle and it's 100 degrees, you know, and 100 percent humidity and you're surrounded by poisonous snakes. And, you know, it's it isn't the funnest thing, but it's a great, you know, it's for this. I'm, I'm sure it's the sort of same experience that Shackleton or people like that had on yeah. expeditions where people said, was it fun, you know, tramping to the, you know, the South Pole? Well, it wasn't fun, but it was certainly something worth doing. And uh, it was, you know, tested your mettle, but I'm not saying it was anything. Well, I mean, we did have, you know, slightly more comforts than Shackleton, but it really was, you know, pretty horrible conditions for the actors. And, you know, and they're, you're putting them through, you know, heat and explosions. And because I was trying to do as much as possible in camera. So yeah. there's not a lot of CG apart from, you know, massive wide shots where yeah. you can't possibly blow up a mountain. But everything else, I certainly do try and do in camera. So they, they are, they're, you know, in pretty nasty, covered in ash or, or uh, you know, um, just dealing with the heat, really. And, um, mm. you know, and, and also we're shooting underwater, things like that, which is very mm. difficult, you know. So, I mean, the, one of the actress, the actress who had to do sort of six days underwater, when she turned up, she, you know, they, they told me she couldn't swim. So um, <laughs> she had to go on a two week crash course to learn to swim um and it wasn't and what we were shooting wasn't even like nice breaststroke across the surface this was underwater, no, underwater you know battling lava for six days so she did amazingly i mean a couple of times you know the other actor had to pull her to the top because she uh she was sinking but um but you know she was you know incredibly brave and uh we got the sequence but uh, it's things like that the obstacles you can't really predict yeah. um when you're planning it but uh, the planning is definitely more fun than than uh, the difficult conditions a lot of the time. So talking about difficult conditions, obviously we're in the middle of the COVID pandemic. Did, has that changed filmmaking greatly? Or have, is it harder? Yeah, now? I mean, I, I haven't shot yet under the COVID conditions yet because I've, I've been, um, it sort of happened between projects. So I mm. just finished the last one and I'm about to start the one in the new year. And um, so I've been just doing mainly um, tons of script development. So when you normally you might have two or three things on your shelf ready to go. I've now got like five, six, seven, eight things because all we've been doing is developing scripts. But other people I, I know have been shooting under those conditions and, and in the new year, I probably still will be. And it's just, you have to be a lot more careful about contact with people and you make bubbles and um, it takes, it's slower, but, it, it, but any, any difficulty like these, these sort of things def, usually make everyone more focused and actually often becomes more efficient because you can't afford to mess about. And so um, everyone's very, you know, on the ball. So I haven't done it yet, but I, I will be in the new year and um, I'm sure it's going to be uh, interesting. Which brilliantly leads into my final couple of questions. So your next project is the legend hunters, I believe. Actually, before that I'm doing, um, uh, well, legend hunters I've already shot. Oh, that's, okay. That's in post. Mm -hmm. And um, the next one I'm shooting is actually uh, the uh, story of Ferdinand Magellan, the first person to circumnavigate the Earth. So oh, wow. uh, next year is the 500th anniversary of uh, what remained of the expedition making it back. Uh, but it's not a spoiler. I think everyone knows that the expedition made it, made it back. But it, um, it's a you know, high seas adventure um, and it's for Amazon. So that's another thing I haven't done before. It's not... Um, you know, for the theatres, it's it's uh, for yeah. uh, in most of the world, it's on Amazon. So it's uh, an interesting new streaming um, route for me on that. Yeah. So have you cast anybody for that yet, or is it still? It's still in casting, um, and uh, but it's very authentic. So I, I mean, much like the you know the last film, I'll probably be going for a lot of um, Spanish and Portuguese actors mm -hmm. um, to make it very uh, authentic, and uh, and who knows, I might pull out the old shooting it in two languages trick again <laughs> so we'll see <laughs> that'd be amazing right now my final question it's a bit offbeat but um you directed the music video for one of the biggest internet phenomenons ever <laughs> in rick rolling so my, my final question is um 
have you ever rickrolled anybody and what's it like being associated to the largest inter internet phenomenon ever well i have never rickrolled anybody at all i wouldn't be so mean but i have been rickrolled many many times and uh it never seems it seems to uh, stop amusing people to uh, catch me out with it but uh you know and it's every time it's really you go oh i can't believe i got caught again but um it's very it's, it's very weird because um, at the time, you know, it was it was a number one hit all around the world. Mm. Then time passes. I became a film director, went off and did other things. And then for some reason, out of the blue, out of the, out of the you know, the dim distance, this thing came back to haunt me. I don't know what I'd done to deserve it, but uh, I can't complain, I suppose, that uh, it's, uh, it makes people laugh. So Shame you're not getting royalties from it. I know that's the other tragedy, but... <laughs> Anyway, thank you very much for your time. Congratulations on Skyfire. It's absolutely amazing. Um, everybody needs to go and rent it, buy it, uh, stream it, whatever they do um, on Blu-ray, DVD and digital now. So thank you once again, Simon. Pleasure to have you on. Thank you. It was great to be there. Great to talk to you. All right. Take care. Thank you.